And speaking about being a grown up in America, Abby Edwards is a senior at Butler and she has already completed more college than most of us in the room through Wright State. So please welcome Abby Edwards and her dog, Kathy, with a K, to the stage. Everybody, we're half, we're more than halfway through. How are we feeling? You still excited to be here? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> well, I'm still excited to be here because my name, as Sam very eloquently said, is Abby Edwards, and I am here today to share with you the impact that self-advocacy can have on your life. Now, when most people think of self-advocacy, they think that it's just a way to get something done. When I thought of self-advocacy, I envisioned something dramatic, like a petition, like someone in Washington. I didn't know that self-advocacy could be as simple as sending an email. It wasn't until I was asked to speak about it that I realized what self-advocacy really is, a choice to take control of your life. Now that's all well and good. If it's so simple, why haven't we all done it? Maybe it's because we don't feel like it's our choice to make. We live in a world that is constantly changing. New technology and trends come out all the time and it can give us the impression that we don't really have a say in what goes on in the world around us. I can personally relate to feeling out of control. Around four and a half years ago, I was at a point in my life where I felt like I had no say over what happened to me. At this point, I had just lost the remainder of my vision, had just had major back surgery, and was going through a second round of IV treatment for osteoporosis. This was a time in my life where I felt like everything had been taken out of my hands. Just before my freshman year of high school, I started exploring the role that technology could have in my life. I began to utilize things like email to communicate with my teachers and to complete assignments. At some point that year, I became aware of all the opportunities that had been opened up to me, and I made the choice to embrace all that life had to offer. With renewed confidence, I communicated with the mission staff at Wright State, and then, my sophomore year, with my first ever college professors. As my confidence continued to grow, I decided to apply for a guide dog. I was approved by Guiding Eyes for the Blind and spent a life-changing summer training with my guide dog, Kathy, in New York. I got more than just a dog that summer, though. I got even more confidence because now I was able to not just talk confidently, but also to walk confidently. I carried this confidence into my junior year, and when I was having trouble in one of my psychology classes at Wright State, I was able to confidently speak with the dean of the department to resolve my problem. Everyone around me noticed how confident I felt, so my school district nominated me for a National Self-Advocacy Award. As a result of receiving this award, I was able to be a guest on a radio show, a local newscast, and had several opportunities to speak for different civic groups. Last summer, as a result of advocating for myself, I attended an independent living program that taught me invaluable skills like cooking, cleaning, things that will last me a lifetime. Looking back, I realized that it was my choice to take control of my life those four and a half years ago that has led me to where I am today. Now thus far, you've been sitting back listening to my story thinking, gosh, this is nice, I don't have to do anything. So this is where I would like to extend a challenge to everyone here today to come up with at least one thing that you would like to see change in your life. Ask yourself, what can I do to accomplish this? Then realize that you have the power to make that goal a reality. You will find out, as I once did, 
that once you start advocating for yourself, it gets easier and easier to accomplish bigger and bigger goals. Consider the impact that simply deciding to take control of your life could have on you and those around you. And don't just think of self-advocacy as a way to get things done. Think of it as a state of mind, one that will take you as far as you can imagine. Thank you. Thank you.